So let's learn a little bit about calculus. Don't underestimate yourself, especially if you're saying, there's no way I'm going to understand this. Well, don't uh, be so sure about that. Let's go ahead and talk uh, real quick about what's going on. All right, so here is kind of a graphical interpretation or representation of what this is saying in calculus. So let's just talk about this for a second. All right, now don't get too wrapped up in the details in terms of all this technical stuff. Let's just think about this, slow things down. So here we have this yellow shape right here. This curve is what we call a parabola, okay? Now, anytime you graph something uh, in mathematics, uh, typically you're going to graph it on a little coordinate plane like this. A little, um, if you've ever used graph paper, okay, graph paper kind of goes like that. You can kind of think of, of, of uh, this plane. We call it the XY plane, a coordinate plane. It's kind of like graph paper. It's just kind of a grid system, so we can graph all kinds of things on that grid system. But here we have this graph of this little U-shaped thing. Now, uh, looking at this problem, this little x squared, okay, uh, what we're trying to do is look at the graph of that. Now, the graph of this x squared, I'm speaking in very loose language here. So if you're like a, you know, uh, expert in mathematics, you're like, hey, you know, you're not saying this. Well, I'm just speaking in the, you know, kind of general middle school level, okay? So we don't need to make it overly technical. What we need to do is just understand the essence of what's going on. So this x squared, its graph is this little shape right here. We call this a parabola, okay? And I could actually make a little video here to teach you how to plot that. It's not that difficult. All right, so here is the graph of this x squared thing. Now, um, to be kind of um, technically correct, I'm going to put y equals x squared. This just happens to be the equation to this uh, graph. So everything you can graph in mathematics has a respective equation that goes with it, and this is the equation right there. Okay, so enough said, hopefully, on that. That's what we're looking at. Now, what are we trying to do? Well, the objective in this problem is we want to figure out the area of this blue shaded region, okay? So if you notice, uh, the top of it, I'll kind of try to draw it out a little bit like that. It curves, and then it goes down, and then it goes like this, and it goes like this. So it's like a little, it has a little bit of a curve up here. It's not a trapezoid. It's not like this. There is a curve. And it goes from one, okay, this grid system, we just count off here, it goes one, two, three, four. It can kind of continue on this way. So between one and three, okay, if we kind of count underneath this curve along what we call this x axis, this line here, it forms this shape right here. And the objective is we want to find the area of that blue shaded region. Now, uh, most uh, students have already dealt with basic area problems. They're like, oh, area? I can do that. So, for example, if you wanted to find the area of a rectangle, you would just go the length times the width. So the area equals the length times width. You probably know um, other area formulas like the area of a circle and a triangle and all uh, different sorts of uh, basic shapes like that. But when it comes to this crazy shape, you're like, okay, I can find the area of that, but I need a formula. What's the formula for this shape? Well, there is no formula. There is no formula. So some of you might be like, hey, well, if there's no formula, how can we possibly get the area of this blue shaded region? Well, calculus is going to come to the rescue. This is one of the main uh, things that calculus does. This is why calculus is so powerful it's able to find the area and volume of all sorts of crazy shapes where there is no formula, okay? So with that kind of understood, and hopefully you kind of get the uh, essence of what I'm trying to say, the objective here is we want to find the area of this blue shaded region between 1 and 3, and we're going to need calculus to do this. So what, let's go ahead and take a look at this little symbol here. And this symbol... Uh, this is what we call an integral in calculus, just so you can have a little bit more information about it if you're interested. But what it's saying is add up, find the area, start from 1, go to 3, between 1 and 3, and you want to find the area underneath this curve x squared. Okay, so the calculus is saying effectively start from 1, go to 3, and find the entire area underneath that curve, which goes to this little uh, line right here. Now, I'm speaking in very, very loose language again. We don't even need to uh, 
understand what this little dx is. This is important when you study mathematics, but I mean, study calculus, but effectively, this is what this is saying. Hey, give me the area between one and three underneath the curve x squared. So that's the objective. There is no formula that we can kind of plug in and crunch. You just got to be able to follow directions, follow a little recipe. And when you see this, you're going to see that calculus, you know, uh, a lot of it is not, you know, I don't want you to be so intimidated by all this crazy symbology that, you know, you might, you know, be um, scared away from taking the subject. So let's go ahead and actually solve this problem. And I'm going to walk you through step by step. Okay, so what's our first step? Well, the first step is we're going to focus in on this x squared right here. Okay, so we're going to uh, focus in on this. So I'm going to circle that x squared. Now, what we're going to do is you see this is x to the second power. What we're going to do is we're going to add 1 to that 2. Okay, so you can see I'm doing the work right there. It's always 1. Okay, now I don't want to, uh, let me back that up. It's not always, always 1 because there could be different curves, a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, type of problems, but in general, in basic calculus problems, you're always going to add one. This is kind of the recipe, okay? So that gives us x squared, or x2 plus one, which is x to the third power. Now, whatever this answer turned out to be, two plus one is three, we're gonna divide x cubed by the answer, okay? So that's how this works. So x uh, squared, gonna add one, the result is 3. We're going to divide by 3. So we're going to end up with x to the third power over 3. Okay. Now, what x is, is x just represents some number x to the third power. Uh, well, let's just start with x squared. It's just some number times itself. If I have a number like 2 times 2, uh, that's 2 squared. So x times x is, uh, we could write that as x squared. It's just some number times itself. X cubed is X times X times X, some number times itself three times, that's X cubed, all right? So that's all that means, and this X just represents some value. So we'll get to that later, but this is step one. Okay, so let's move on to step two. All right, now notice from step one, the result was this thing, X cubed over three. So what's step two? Well, we're gonna take our answer, our result, and we're gonna subtract it from uh, it's uh, itself. Okay. I'll explain this here in a second. So just write this down x cubed uh, over three minus x cubed over three. Okay. So you're like, oh, that's step two. That's all it is. Okay. So what, when we have our result from this, we're going to subtract it from itself. Okay. So now let's move on to step three. So step three, we have to kind of go back to this um, original integral, okay, this is this original form of this problem, and let's uh, talk about this 1 and 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the 3, we're going to plug in 3 for this x right there, okay, and then this 1, we're going to plug in uh, for this x right there, okay, so that's what step 3 is, and I'm kind of just mapping this out, doing this in a very easy you know, to understand a little recipe, okay? So this X right here, we're gonna replace with a three, and this X right here, we're gonna replace with a one, okay? So that'll bring us to step four, okay? So step four, replacing this X with a three, and this X with a one. So let's go ahead and do that math here, okay? So this is X cubed over three, so that's three cubed over three, minus this right here, we'll, we'll plug in a one, so that's one cubed over three, so 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So this would be 27 over 3. 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Of course, this will all just be 1 third. So when we do this problem right here, a couple of ways you can look at it. You can see the denominators are the same. So we're going to get 26 over 3. And then when we convert that into a mixed number, uh, we'll get 8 and 2 thirds. Of course, we can see it this way. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 minus uh, 1 third is 8 and 2 thirds. Guess what? We are done. Okay, and hopefully you uh, uh, didn't think that was too painful. Okay, and, and what are we saying here? Well, the answer is 8 and 2 thirds, meaning the area of this blue shader region between 1 and 3 underneath this curve, x squared is 8 and 2 thirds uh, units. 
you just did your first calculus problem. If you've never done calculus, that is it. Okay, this is what we call integration. And uh, again, extremely, extremely powerful. But here's the deal. Okay, in mathematics, a lot of what you're going to be doing is following steps. Okay, that's why it's so critical that you take great notes. Okay, but if you take excellent notes, listen to your teacher, got a great teacher deliver, delivering clear and understandable math instruction, and then you practice, this math isn't beyond anyone, okay? But it does take time to build up a lot of the uh, kind of uh, prerequisite skills to actually take a calculus course. So um, who needs to take calculus? Let's just talk about that real quick. Well, typically calculus is a course that uh, is for, uh, let's write this right here if you've ever heard this word, STEM. Uh, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So if you're going to go to college for some sort of STEM major, uh, obviously engineering, computer science, you know, chemistry, something like that, well, then you're definitely going to be taking calculus and much, much more. But I can tell you right now, uh, if you can pay attention and uh, listen and follow, you know, kind of a recipe, then you can uh, successfully get through calculus, okay? And I'm kind of speaking in loose language because there is a lot of background work. But if you're interested in calculus and getting ready to take a calculus course, well, in my math help program, I have basic math courses all the way up to pre-calculus, which is very, very advanced. Of course, that's the actual course you need to take uh, before you uh, jump into a real deal calculus course because calculus is... Uh, pretty challenging when you take an actual full complete calculus course but you know hopefully this video um, explained the essence of it and if that is the case don't forget to like and subscribe and with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day